A 31-year-old man was seen on the maternity ward security footage entering his girlfriend's room. The tension escalated over a disagreement regarding whether their newborn would bear his surname. Amidst the heated exchange, a struggle ensued over a firearm they were both gripping. As the dispute grew more heated, a nurse stumbled into the turmoil, trying to mediate. She bravely placed herself between them, aiming to defuse the tension. Tragically, in the midst of the struggle, the firearm went off. The unforeseen discharge of the gun led to a horrifying outcome, turning the scene into everyone's worst nightmare. Jacqueline Pokwal was born on June 30, 1977, in Ghana, West Africa. She grew up there, went through school, and eventually moved to the United States to further her education. Settling in, she enrolled at the University of Texas in Arlington, earning a master's degree in social work by 2019. People who knew her said Jacqueline loved helping others. As a single mother, she did a great job raising her son, Nigel, and was known for her positive attitude. Teachers at her son's school wished they had more mothers like her. Jacqueline was always keen on supporting her son's school, from providing pens to paper. She wanted to make things easier for the teachers and improve the students' education. Her family called her Jackie, their guardian angel on earth. Her cousin praised Jackie for always being there when needed. Her relatives agreed she was unfailingly helpful and reliable. Her desire to serve led her to a job in healthcare, working as a social worker at the Dallas Methodist Medical Center. There, she quickly became well-liked by her colleagues. Jacqueline sometimes worked alongside Annette Flowers, a nurse with a long career at the hospital. Annette, born in Dallas, Texas on August 2, 1959, grew up in Mesquite and graduated from North Mesquite High School. After earning her nursing degree, she spent over 40 years in maternal and child care. Known as a strong, independent woman, Annette raised four children on her own and looked forward to retiring to enjoy more time with her family. On October 22, 2022, Jacqueline, 45, and Annette, 63, were working the morning shift in the maternal child unit of the Methodist Medical Center. Jacqueline entered the room of a patient named Selena, who had just given birth, for a routine check. Instead, she found Selena being attacked by her boyfriend and the baby's father, a dangerous man named Nestor Hernandez, who was hitting her repeatedly with a gun case. Little is known about Nestor's early life, except that he was born in 1991 in Dallas, Texas. Details about his family background are scarce, though it's mentioned he has Latin roots. He never met his father, and his mother, whose name remains unknown, had three other children. Nestor finished elementary school but didn't complete high school. He had a history with gangs, which was evident from the many tattoos covering his body. Dallas County records showed Nestor had been convicted of serious crimes like robbery, burglary, and drug possession. Since 2014, he had a turbulent relationship with Selena, marked by jealousy and frequent breakups, often because he saw unfaithfulness where there was none. His stints in jail also strained their on and off relationship. What Selena's family kept quiet, later revealed, was her involvement in criminal activities too. Both were once arrested for a burglary, with Selena serving a shorter sentence than Nestor, who got eight years but was released on parole after seven. Despite his extensive criminal record, Nestor often received lenient treatment, resulting in six different violations of his ankle monitor conditions. His parole officer seemed to give him special consideration, allowing Nestor to visit his newborn son in the hospital, even though it was outside his allowed area, monitored by his electronic tag. This decision led to severe criticism of the Texas criminal justice system and the parole board when it became public knowledge. On the day of the incident, Nestor was in the hospital, again violating his parole terms, armed with a gun, holding a beer, and under the influence of drugs. Despite the clear danger he posed, Jacqueline tried to intervene to prevent him from harming Selena and the baby. Tragically, her attempt ended with her being fatally shot by Nestor. Annette, hearing the gunshot, rushed to the room to find out what was happening 
and was also shot. She managed to seek help, but died shortly after. The incident spread rapidly, with initial reports inaccurately inflating the number of gunmen and victims. Local news quickly covered the event, with confusion over the number of injured and involved parties adding to the public's anxiety. The Dallas community was shocked, and the Dallas police, who led the investigation, tried to calm residents with an official statement. They confirmed the violent incident took place inside the hospital at 11 a.m. on Saturday, October 22nd, providing a timeline of the known events. The armed Nestor not only attacked Jacqueline and Annette, but also confronted a Methodist Health System police sergeant. Security cameras caught the moment the sergeant had to shoot Nestor in the leg to neutralize him as he was reloading his weapon, posing a significant threat to everyone in the hospital. I want to do is just get the people outside, please. We can work this out. Just let some outside, okay? Sergeant Robert Rangel reported a hostage situation, describing how he saw Nestor moving through the hallway with a gun and shot him. Nestor then returned to the room where the incident began. Amid the chaos, Selena, still in the room with her newborn, screamed in terror, fearing for their lives. Nestor had threatened to kill both her and the baby, and then himself. What happened? Sergeant Robert was doing everything he could to prevent further tragedy. A minute after shooting Nestor, he urged him to surrender to avoid more regrettable incidents. Speaking from outside the room in a calming tone, Robert remained composed despite Nestor's defiant attitude. He kept insisting that the situation could be resolved and that his main concern was to ensure everyone's safety. Robert repeatedly asked Nestor to throw the gun out of the room, but he wouldn't comply. As the standoff continued and backup arrived, Nestor seemed to realize he had no way out. Meanwhile, Selena was desperately pleading for no one to shoot. From the moment Nestor first pulled the trigger on Jacqueline to when he was finally apprehended, only 13 minutes had passed. But to those in the hospital, it felt like an eternity. Keep coming, keep coming to the hallway. I need you in the hallway. When Nestor emerged from the room, officers surrounded him, provided first aid, and then took him to another hospital for his leg wound. After receiving medical attention, he was charged with capital murder and assaulting a public servant and was taken to Dallas County Jail to await trial. The Methodist Health System Police requested the Dallas Police Department to take over the investigation of the two murders and the actions of the officer at the hospital. In a move for transparency, the Dallas Police released surveillance videos from the Methodist Medical Center and the body cam footage from the officers present during the incident, editing out only the scenes showing the bodies of Jacqueline and Annette out of respect for them and their families. The medical examiner's office conducted autopsies on the two healthcare workers. Jacqueline's report noted she had been shot in the back of the head and succumbed to her severe injuries, ruled as a homicide. Annette's autopsy revealed she had a gunshot wound to the left side of her face, with the bullet causing severe damage, including to her right carotid artery, leading to her rapid death. It was disclosed that Nestor was on parole for a serious aggravated assault committed in 2015. Aggravated meant the use of a potentially deadly weapon. Yet, he had received special permission from the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to visit the hospital for his child's birth. However, he broke that agreement by arriving hours later than promised. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives was investigating where he had acquired the firearm used in the crimes. As the investigation progressed, those close to the slain healthcare workers prepared to honor their memories. On November 20th, 2022, nearly a month after the tragic events, family and friends of Jacqueline and Annette gathered at a Christian church in Grand Prairie to celebrate their lives and wish them eternal rest. Colleagues highlighted the profound void left by their deaths. They remember Jacqueline as a kind-hearted person who always saw the good in others despite the challenges she faced as a working single mother. Her vibrant spirit and beautiful soul were profoundly missed in the community, and her premature death was felt as a great injustice, especially for her son, who would now have to grow up without her. The most touching moment was when her 12-year-old son, Nigel, paid tribute to her, promising in a letter to live up to the standards she had set for him. 
After his tribute to his mother, Nigel asked her to keep watching over him from heaven as he would always need her care. Family and friends shared that, like Jacqueline, who was a woman of faith always clinging to God, they would follow her example to cope with their loss. As for Annette, her final farewell took place at a memorial park and funeral home. There, everyone remembered her as a generous woman who was always involved in good causes and ready to lend a hand. Her colleagues highlighted her unique nature and her 40-year dedication to maternity care, a field requiring special sensitivity and empathy, traits Annette possessed. While the families of the two healthcare workers were mourning, the time came for Nestor to face justice. His trial began on October 22, 2022, where he was charged with multiple counts of capital murder and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, as well as assaulting a public servant. Since the fatal attack, he had been held in Dallas County Jail with bail set over $2 million. The opening statements from the defense and prosecution were swift, and soon the prosecution began calling witnesses. A brother of Jacqueline and a daughter of Annette were among the first to testify, emphasizing the value of the lives taken by the accused. These were emotional moments in the courtroom, filled with the loved ones of the slain healthcare workers. When Selena, 26, took the stand, she described her intermittent eight-year relationship with Nestor, the father of her baby. She recounted how he entered the room holding a beer and initially seemed happy about fatherhood. However, they argued over his drinking and things spiraled out of control. He struck her multiple times in the head with a gun and the injuries were presented during the trial. Selena added that Nestor became violent under the influence of alcohol, accusing her of having another man in the room before his arrival. In a fit of jealousy and rage, he began searching for this non-existent man with the gun, claiming he wasn't fooled and the baby wasn't his. Continuing her testimony, Selena said that Nestor threatened to end the lives of all three of them and anyone who entered the room. She believed he had a deadly plan as she saw him calling his family members, crying and saying goodbye, telling them to take care of themselves and expressing his love. Selena detailed how when Jacqueline entered, she tried to calm Nestor, who then pretended to go to the bathroom. Instead, he shot Jacqueline from behind. After committing this first act of violence, he reloaded his gun, walked to the door, and opened it, shooting Annette as she entered. Officer Robert then returned fire, wounding the accused. Another prosecution witness, the lead nurse on the day of the attack, praised the work of the two women whose lives were cut short. She also recounted the intense fear sparked by Nestor's actions. Stacy had just entered a room at the end of the hallway and was closing the door when she heard a loud bang. Initially, she reassured her patient that it might be a fallen wet floor sign, but the sound of screams led her to peek into the hallway where she saw Nestor standing. At Selena's room door, she saw Nestor aiming and shooting towards Annette. What terrified her was his satisfied smile during the attack. Witnessing this, she rushed back to her room, locked the door, and hid in the bathroom with her patient. Sergeant Robert from the Methodist police testified next. He was on the postpartum floor for another call when he heard the first gunshot. Heading towards the noise, he heard two more shots and saw Annette clutching her neck, bleeding. Realizing he had no backup, Robert decided to confront the threat to prevent Nestor from harming others. He saw Nestor looking out from the room, gun in hand, and shot him in the leg. The trial also featured expert testimonies providing scientific evidence. A civilian crime scene analyst from the Dallas Police Department detailed the weapon Nestor used and presented evidence like his fingerprints on the gun and gunpowder traces on his skin, proving he fired the weapon. The jury learned Nestor had violated hospital and parole rules by bringing a beer can into the facility. A toxicologist from the Southeast Dallas County Forensic Science Institute presented drug test results showing Nestor had consumed substances like ketamine and amphetamines. However, she clarified that the lab couldn't determine when or how these drugs entered his system. The doctor who performed Jacqueline's autopsy testified next. He confirmed Jacqueline was shot in the back of the head, a fatal wound, noting her otherwise healthy condition and ruling her death a homicide. The doctor who autopsied Annette detailed the gunshot wound on her left face, which fatally damaged major structures, including her right carotid artery. 
Nestor, when testifying, contradicted Selena's statements, claiming her actions led to his loss of control. He admitted to using methamphetamine on October 21, 2022, the day of his son's birth, blaming his frustration over Selena's reluctance to have him at the hospital. He also expressed doubts about his paternity due to their troubled relationship. During her pregnancy, Nestor asked Selena for a DNA test on the fetus, angering her parents as they saw it as disrespectful. He was so doubtful of his paternity that he told her he might not put his last name on the baby's birth certificate. Later, Nestor messaged Selena saying he would get a haircut to take a family photo with their baby. Still upset over his false accusations of infidelity, Selena refused to let him visit. On October 22nd, Nestor hid the gun in a travel bag within the baby's diaper bag to bring it to the hospital room. According to his account, an argument broke out soon after his arrival and he pulled out the gun. Selena urged him to throw it away, but he wanted to sell it for money. When Jacqueline entered the room and tried to stop the altercation, Selena allegedly told her that Nestor wasn't even the father. Nestor claimed the gun fired accidentally amid the chaos of paternity doubts, leading him to panic, shoot blindly into the hallway, hitting a net, and then being shot in the leg by police. Believing his end was near and not wanting to return to jail, he called his mother and brother to say goodbye. Under his lawyer's questioning, he insisted he never intended to kill anyone and accepted responsibility for what happened. After hearing all testimonies and arguments, Nestor was sentenced in the second week of November 2023. At 31, he was found guilty of the capital murder of 45-year-old social worker Jacqueline and 63-year-old nurse Annette, receiving a life sentence without parole, as announced by the Dallas County District Attorney's Office. They expressed satisfaction with the justice served, acknowledging that while it couldn't replace the lost lives or heal the trauma, it prevented Nestor from harming others. The victim's families felt justice was served, knowing he would remain in prison. And that concludes today's The Crime Storyteller episode. Join me next time as we delve into the details of history's most heinous crimes. Goodbye.